you are as free as you allow yourself to be. I wonder if you agree or disagree with the statement. The question is, how free do you want to be? Freedom is often seen as something that we fight for, we strive for, and people have even killed for it. How many people run away on a holiday saying, I want to get away from my work and my home? It's so stressful. It's too much. I can't cope. And they head off on this journey to go and rest and recover. And then they come back home again to deal with the music. In total truth, they have to come back to themselves, to you. You can't escape yourself. You cannot take a vacation from yourself because you are stuck with you from the day you're born to the day you die. There's one thing I do know for sure, is that if you treat freedom like an external pursuit, you'll be chasing those mirages in the desert and you'll never quench your thirst. You'll be thirsty for your entire life. We have really been indoctrinated and conditioned from a very young age. What we believe, what we think, a lot of the time has been taught to us and we believed what we've been taught. That was our normal. We didn't ask too many questions. We lived our life according to the way others lived or the way we saw our parents to live. And then add to that one very important thing that there's nobody in the room has escaped from, either discrimination or abuse or bullying or scorn or hurt or harm. That's a given. What else is a given is the fact that Everyone in the room has been hurt by somebody. And everyone in the room has hurt another person. That's the truth. You see, we can't really escape what others are ever going to do to you. It'd be lovely if we had control of the entire universe, wouldn't it? But if there ever been a pandemic lockdown, if we chose not to. But sometimes we just don't have the choice. What I want to ask you about is what are you going to do about those situations, those uncomfortable, messy situations in your life? Are you going to keep running or are you going to face them? I really grew up in a less than perfect kind of family. I like to say I don't think many of us grew up in a perfect family. It was interesting, I grew up in a middle to upper class family and from the outside it looked picture perfect. The white picket fence, the great role models, it was all looking fabulous. My friends at school and everybody around me said, you know, I want your life. I want to be you. And I thought, hell yeah, you just don't know what's going on. Behind the white, those four walls was a very different picture playing out. As the youngest of three, I was constantly at the mercy of abuse, anger, being the scapegoat. I was the black sheep. I wasn't particularly the favorite at all. And what happened is I started playing that externally. So from the age of six, already there were problems. I was already in a psychologist's room by eight years old. What was wrong with this child? Came from a picture-perfect family. But look at this child, it's a monster. It's playing out, aggressive, beating things up, going crazy. And that was the 1970s. Children were meant to be seen and not heard. And that is where I started my journey of realizing that. I had to find my own coping skills and strategies because I didn't have them at that age. And there was no ways of gaining those strategies. There was a big elephant in the room and the adults were turning a blind eye and pushing it under the carpet. They were not wanting to see the picture. It got to such a bad degree by my early 30s that this pain 
this anger inside. Not even ball sport was making it right. I could hit a squash ball 20 times against the wall, but still that anger remained and it was getting worse and worse. I turned to martial arts. I went from one studio to the next looking for full contact till I found cage fighting. Cage fighting was the best find almost that I could ever find. Here I was, role model therapist by day, at night, cage fighter. My clients thought I was fabulous. I was having 30 clients a day. Great therapist. What they didn't know was I was cracking on the inside. I was screaming for help. But that mask was so good. That job, well, I was living a lie. By night time, it was my only way of releasing that pain, that anger that was building up inside, and I was addicted to it. Every strike, every smack I got, cut, bruise, I wore with like a badge of honor. I liked the emergency room. I got attention. And for those split seconds, I felt, I felt like I was seen. I felt like I was real. I felt like something mattered. I could feel again. Then one day in the middle of a wrestle on the floor with my fellow fighter, something happened. I woke up. What are you doing? What are you doing? I got off the floor, left outside, off that, got off that wrestle, and I left outside that room, never to return ever to a studio ever again. What I realized at the time is I was at this massive crossroads. If I'd carried on any further, there was no return home. And if I got out now, I had a chance of redemption. I was addicted to pain. I was stuck in abuse, cycles and pain and drama cycles. I was not free and I needed help right now. I remember going for a technique and I thought, you're going to help me? Ah, I'm a fighter. No one's going to help me. And then I walked into this room and it was a technique in short called EMDR. That stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. That's a rapid eye movement that they create with a side-to-side -side movement that the therapist does with their fingers. And that opens up all those suppressed memories that are coming in, your, or you've been suppressing, and the traumas in your life. What I didn't expect of a six sessions, guess what? My session, all my abuse, sexual abuse, came flying out at me like a whirlwind, tornado, and just ripped through my life. I was left absolutely raw, vulnerable, Scared and alone, I'd absolutely nowhere to turn. At that time, I decided, I'm going to go for counseling. Off I went, and I picked up the EMDR textbook. On the first page is a quote by Jean-Paul Sartre. Freedom is what you do with what's been done to you. Freedom is what you do with what's been done to you. I said to my therapist at the time, yeah, this thing makes no sense. What the heck is written here? Freedom, doing, whoever, someone's done wrong, they must go to jail, they must pay the price, they're bad, finished. I want retribution. And she said to me, Lucinda, one day you're going to work this out. Well, the one day only took close to 20 years. I think you can say I'm an extremely slow learner. And from that, I started doing Qigong. That is a Chinese, ancient Chinese form of martial art. It was a way to find peace and balance in my life. And I met up with my master and he said to me, Lucinda, will you assist me in the men's maximum sentence prison with Qigong classes? I kind of didn't want to. 
but I knew this man must know what he's up for, what he's about. As we got to the prison that day, he said to me, there are just two things I want you to remember, huh? Two things, just remember this. Don't judge. Show compassion and show each man. Look at them with soft eyes. And number two, remember, it is hurt people that hurt people. See the light, see the good in these offenders. We got to the open entrance and the what if started. What if I'm raped? What if I'm hurt and I don't come out? But I carried on into that first corridor. The corridor was dark like this room right now, and there was a light flickering. The floor was cold and concrete. There was a very, very deep stench of testosterone, sweat. And my lungs, they burned. And as I walked through, I saw these, these cells were overcrowded, and I knew it was no place for a woman to be. And then the cat calling started. You slut! Come to daddy. And many other below the belt comments we shouldn't get into tonight. And so we carried on. We were swallowed into the bowels of the prison and led into this, the gymnasium where 15 muscular men stood. They wanted none of this Qigong master or his woman's sidekick. The sessions were over six weeks, one hour a week only. And from the start, I watched these men soften before me. What I knew is that one hour wasn't really enough. They had to go back to their cells and they had to face the abuse from their fellow offenders and then also the wardens. And there was one young man that came up to me right in the beginning of that first session and he held my hands and he said to me, thank you for believing in me. That was a day I've never forgotten. Because I realized that believing in somebody, no matter how bad or how wrong you think it has been, sometimes those people are the people that need that the most. They just have got slightly off the program for now. And so my sessions continued, and then they asked me, but how do we find freedom in confinement? I went back to my therapy, the skills, the tools I had, and I created a three-step process. Acknowledge, assess, accept, Acknowledge comes down to they had to accept that they were offenders. There's no running away from it. There's no use trying to numb the pain, take the drugs available in the prison and distract yourself. Like we all know how well we do that in life. They had to face the music and they had to be accountable for what they did. The second thing was assess. They got there for a reason. What did they do wrong? Where could they have corrected it? and go through the facts, the positives, the negatives, where had they got unstuck? Number three, acceptance. They had to learn to love themselves, no matter what. No ifs. No one's perfect in this room, and neither were they. And they had to sit not with the knowledge, knowing that they are hurt, and that is why they've ended up where they are. They've got a past, and they need to start working on that past. And they need to start moving forward, what were they going to do about where they were? And so by the end of the time of six weeks, I had a group of men who knew you are as free as you allow yourself to be. They made a decision that they were not going to feel the trap of the physical confines and they realized the mental confines were way worse. Now, this is what happened in lockdown, famous pandemic lockdown that affected almost the entire world. I wonder where you were 
in March 2020. I know where I was. I was on the road doing what I do well, distracted, driving around, being busy, being a great person out there with a heck of a schedule. And I came home all alone and I had to face the music to my life. For the first time, there was no way out. It was me, what we thought was 20 days became many, many months. And I came back and that is what I faced. I looked in the mirror and I said, so who's gonna live here? Are you gonna make it or are you gonna fall apart? And so when the external world shut down, my internal world woke up. Now, why is this of importance to you? Is because every one of you have got a story. Every one of you has been hurt. Every one of you has faced conditioning, indoctrination. The most important thing, my question to you is, what are you doing about it? Are you going to let it destroy your life? Are you going to bleed out on other people? Are you going to hurt the people that never hurt you in the first instance? Not even that you're doing it intentionally. But what are you going to do starting today? You don't have control over the outside world. I'm sorry to tell you, you can't control our governments. You can definitely not control the people around you. You can't control the drivers on the road. The, the, the many factors every day. And if you want that control, you need to go home and lock the doors and not leave. But we're living a big world here. And I believe in turning things around. And as my master said to me, it is hurt people who hurt people. You can remember that always. You will realize that when somebody hurts you, don't take it personally. It's because they need help and they need love and they need somebody to believe in them. I truly believe in this world that so many people are actually trapped in their own trap and they created it. Every time you had a blow, a breakup in a relationship, something happened, someone hurt you, what you did is you went into confinement. And now's the time to change that exact story in your life. Take your life, the remote of your life, in your hands. You have way more power than you even think. And I want to leave you with one last thought. You are as free as you allow yourself to be.